This is Hammett. And Jessica. And you're listening to the Friendly Atheist Podcast. Please go to patreon.com slash friendly atheist podcast to support the show. Five bucks a month. You get ad-free episodes. You get a bonus episode and so much more. So much more. Today, we're going to try to insert some audio clips into this thing because we're taking it up a level. Sometimes I've talked about having a soundproof uh-huh. booth with you. Yeah. And you responded by saying, why don't we have two dogs okay, in the room <laughs> when we're recording? Okay. Um, yeah, I did bring a secondary dog into our p- recording place, a.k.a. my house. Um, cause I am house sitting for some friends of mine. It's my, uh, my dog, Dottie's best friend, Harley. Harley's moms are out of town. So I've been staying at their house and treating it like a vacation cause they do have an above ground Done. pool. But now we're here. I'm going to record these two wrestle a lot. So if you hear a lot of noises, just pretend it's not happening. We're a professional Very professional. Um, Let's let me start with this thing that I don't think you've seen yet. But so I'm watching my sermons yesterday, like most like old like ladies watch people. their stories. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, the new independent fundamentalist Baptist cult people, these are the ones who are like, yes, In- we have little strip mall churches and we preach the gospel. But really, they just preach like anti LGBTQ hatred. Wait, were those descriptors or the name of it? Uh, probably I'm both really okay. The new Baptist something new something fundamentalist fundamentalist uh, new independent fundamentalist Baptists. That's what they call Ooh, themselves. That's a lot of qualifiers. It <laughs> really is new IFB. <laughs> we'll call them that. So these guys recently had what they called also a red hot preaching conference. Ew. Um, red yeah. hot. Ew. Yeah. Not Calm the qualifier down. I would have used. No. But um, so I'm watching, you know, day four of their mega conference here, which is to an audience of, you know, tens of people. <laughs> sure. But all of a sudden I hear this and I'm going to try to play the clip for you here. Check it out. So I wanted to talk about this Hement Meta. <laughs> so close. I don't know if I pronounce his name right, but I don't really care. <laughs> Me, he's major beta. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's the first thing I heard. That would be preacher Aaron Thompson. Are you laughing at me being called Major Beta? Uh, listen, Jessica was laughing so loud right there it busted I'm the so audio, sorry. I'm and now I had to re- down. I had to restart <laughs> I was this just section. Very funny. Anyway, so yeah, that's what I'm hearing as he's talking, and I'm like. Oh. Oh, this should be interesting. What's the name of this sermon that he's giving on a Sunday night? It's called Militant Atheism. And I'm like, I'm thinking, oh, he's probably going to do that whole Stalin, Pol Pot, that old canard about like, well, those people killed in the name of atheism. No, it's It's like, that's not the issue. Anyway, I was expecting to hear those lies. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh, oh, this is going to be about me here for a second. I've often said you're a 21st century Pol Pot. I've said that for years. Yeah. So his beef with me is that I routinely watch these people's sermons Mm because I hate myself. And I post clips of the crazy things they say because I want people to see, like, listen, I know most Christians don't think like this, but these people are genuinely Christian. They certainly believe they are following the gospel. Mm -hmm. And also this is kind of the extremist version of where it goes because they have called for the execution of gay people by the government Mm -hmm. As if that's just a thing we ought to do. They have uh, said that they treat women as inferior. They are we uh, atheists. They, they uh, no, no, no. They treat women as inferior. Okay. Uh, because they are to be silent in church. Okay. They must be uh, obedient to their husbands. Mm-hmm, which I while, am. Which all, while always adding, of course, they're equal. Um, but sure. by equal, we mean subservient. Well. Um, they're also All rabidly, animals are created equal. <laughs> created equal. Some are just more equal than others. Rabidly, this is a brand new concept. <laughs> very anti-Semitic as well. Uh-huh. So I've posted clips of many of these guys. Aaron Thompson in particular has said some really horrible things. Mm-hmm. So this is, and it's not and, like this avoids their, uh, it's not like they don't know I'm doing it because word comes back to them. 
Like, why are we going viral? Yeah. It's because something stupid you said mm-hmm. is being played by a bunch of people. And then a bunch of Christians are like, this guy ain't a real Christian. It's like, buddy, no, he is. But I'm glad you're denouncing it. Can Let's keep we talking. do a quick thing on the no, tr- no true Scotsman fallacy? Yeah, yeah. I feel like maybe we should focus more on like these sort of like poor argu- bad faith arguments that we've been getting. Do you want to explain the no true Scotsman fallacy? If someone's in your tribe, whatever that tribe is, but they do something you don't like, you don't get to pretend they're not one of you as well. Richard Dawkins has said a bunch of stupid stuff lately. You don't get to say, well, he's not a real atheist because he's transphobic or something. No, he is an atheist. He also happens to have some really bad ideas. In addition to Mm -hmm. that, you got to reconcile with that. So do these people. Yeah. So anyway, uh, that's why he doesn't like me, because the only thing he's ever in the news for, Aaron Thompson, is when he says something stupid online, Mm -hmm. and then I share that with people. Yeah. He also claims I take him out of context. It's like, buddy, I'm just sharing a clip of exactly yeah, what you're saying. Yeah, we're about to share your audio, my dude. We actually talked about him recently because a guy, a Tyler Dinsmore, uh, got arrested for going, for threatening to cause violence at a pride parade. Hmm. And uh, he said Aaron Thompson was his pastor. Aaron, the new IFB church has said, like, we don't know who this guy is. Oh, we have nothing to do with him. But anyway, that's why this guy doesn't like me. So I'm just, you know, enjoying my little clip here. Making friends everywhere you go. As I do. And then uh, I will share with you the next clip. Uh, Let's see if I can find this. Like I said, we're professionals over here. Here we go, part two. Okay. And 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 I have some things to say about him. I I also suspect that he might be a closet (gasps) fat. He definitely talks like one. He definitely (gasps) likes to defend fat. Like, every clip that he puts on there pretty much is about us ripping on homos during Pride Month. Part two. Oh, no. I will say, I'm going to tell you this. This was a 20-minute sermon part. 20 minutes that I've condensed down to, like, about two minutes of clips. But, yeah. Oh, I added in the bleeps, in case you're all wondering. Um, So... It's like, where are you going with this? What I did not include in this particular clip was him reading off the Wikipedia page for me (laughs) and and saying, oh, look at this guy. He won Jeopardy on April 1st, no less. As if one, as if I wrote it. The show aired on April 1st. And he's like, isn't that interesting? Then he says... What is he implying there? I I don't know. Then he says, like, it doesn't say anything about how he did after... He won a game. I guess that means he's not smart. Yeah, like, dog. Yeah, that's what that means. Famously, I love if it. you I lose love on it. Jeopardy, it's because you're dumb. <laughs> that's right. Fucking okay, morons. so I'm like, all right, where are you? Where are you going with this? Now that you have explained to your tens of people mm-hmm. your latent uh, homosexuality. Yeah, exactly. Okay, here's the next clip. Let's see. Here's part three. I like the clips. I think they're great, but they're also causing a lot of persecution. He calls himself friendly, but then he knows that when he posts this stuff, that people are going to get upset because the way he words it. So you know, you we'll it. get up and we'll caveat what we're preaching and say, hey, you know, the government should do this after a fair trial <coughs> and then take him out in the back and shoot him in the back of the head. They, but they don't concentrate on the whole quote. They concentrate on the part that they want you to be mad about. Yeah. I, let me call. Whoa. Let me point out one this thing there. This is some delusionist. Yeah, it's crazy stuff. One thing he said there is that he is being persecuted yeah. for all this, which is an interesting way of describing me sharing your words yeah. with the public. What do you think persecution means when they say it? When they say it, I think they can't handle criticism. Okay. Somebody doesn't agree with me and is doing so That's not quietly. Persecu- it's the Christian nationalist form gotcha. of persecution. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, and he's very upset mm. that this is what people know him for. He thinks... I'm kind I mean, of this happy is, that he his... notices that we defend the gay folks a lot. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for noticing, bud. From his perspective... His argument is that when I post clips, Uh I say these insane people Mm -hmm. want to see gay people executed as if I'm saying they are calling for violence. And Thompson's defense, which is not much of a defense, is, of course, I'm not calling for violence. Mm. I'm saying in a perfect world, Mm -hmm. gay people would go to court, be convicted of a crime, then be sentenced to death. 
by the government. And there's a difference. So how dare you insinuate mm. that I mm. want to uh, want them to die or this is about me or that I'm encouraging my flock here to cause violence. That's his thing. Except I look back at things I've posted. It's like, no, buddy, I do say you want them executed by the government. Yeah. It's still horrible. Yeah. I don't know why you think that makes you look better. Right. Like, I'm against the death penalty, period. And it matters little to me that the state kills somebody after a trial by jury. It matters more to me that maybe the state shouldn't be murdering its own you know, constituents. But w- what do I know? I'm a beta. No, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm not a beta. What am I? I'm probably worse. <laughs> Do I was like, really? You just this? dropped me Can from you Alpha call to me Beta? Names too? Uh, here's the next little clip, yeah. short one. I mean, I'll admit it, it might sound bad. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It might yeah, sound it might, bad when I quote him in context. It might sound bad when I threaten to kill people. It's pretty, uh, yeah. pretty wild. But. Next, <laughs> next clip. We're not cult leaders, <laughs> we're preaching the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> Buddy. Not cult leaders, just <laughs> preaching the Bible, because famously no cults have ever been based on the Bible. Yeah. Don't ask me. I don't <laughs> study cults all the fucking time. <laughs> These all right. people. A little longer clip. Here okay. we go. You know, and here's the thing. He calls himself the friendly atheist, and he wants us banned off all these platforms. Well, here's what I would say. Whoa. This guy, this guy actually is the hate preacher. <gasps> so this guy, you know, I, I suspect he's a fag. I can't 100% say for sure he is. But you know what? If it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, and it's constantly defending f***s all the time, I think it's possible that he is. I'm not saying for... I mean, he's definitely got some soy in the tank. Soy in the tank? What does that mean? I, I assume it's, it's like a word they use to describe oh, effeminate soy men. soy boys, yeah, right? Yeah, Oh, that's cute of them. I know. Can we sell shirts that say soy in the tank? I kind of love yeah. that. Um, and I'm soy. very jealous of this attention that you've gotten from people <laughs> we don't like and who don't like us. I'm genuinely quite... Yeah. Can you hear the dogs he just is, running around upstairs? They're mad It's going to sound like too. fucking thunder. They, these people care more about my sexual orientation it's than I promise I ever str- have thought about it. Yeah, it's very because I think of you as an, as an aggressively non-sexual person Thank you. generally, I but I that. do know you have biological children. <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, live your life, I guess. But uh, God, I hope two when more, uh, two I more hope short when my friends here. get uh, executed by the state, they'll give me their house and their two daughters and their cat and their dog and their fish and their garden. Do you yeah. think they'll do that in their pool? I'm sure it's in the will. All right, two more short clips here. Yeah. Number one. You know, he, he claims to have been the one that got Pastor Anderson's YouTube page permanently, p- got him banned permanently on YouTube. Wow. Have it smiling well, so much. Well, you know what? <laughs> Great job, man. <laughs> <laughs> Let me give some context to that thing. The ringleader of these new IFB people is a guy named Steven Anderson. He, I've been not following, but like sure. been aware of this guy for about a decade now, paying attention to him. And he's the guy that really started this group of people. He's the one that's like, I baptize you as another new IFB leader. Go start your strip mall church in another mm. city. And he's kind of the guy who started all this. He's someone who's so awful in terms of what he says. Yeah. That YouTube, I mean, a long time ago, YouTube banned him from their platform. So what did he do? He created new channels. He tried to get his stuff, uh, get his followers to post his sermons on their YouTube channels. Mm. Then those got banned. 34 countries have banned him from stepping foot in their countries because they have hate crime laws that prevent that sort of thing. Mm. And I don't think I took credit for him disappearing from YouTube. But what I have done in the past is I pointed out that long after he was theoretically banned from YouTube, mm-hmm. he his sermons are still being posted there regularly on a variety of different channels sure. that don't say Anderson's name on it. Mm-hmm. They go under code names. Oh, it's but, like back in the day when we, when we used LimeWire to download things, <laughs> remember? And they would always spell everything wrong yeah. so the fuzz couldn't catch us. So I pointed out these channels have been posting his sermons, like recent sermons, Uh regularly, what the hell? Like, you're not allowed to do that according to YouTube's own rules. Mm -hmm. So either enforce your own rules or say we don't have this rule anymore. I don't care which it is, but stop being hypocrites about it. And then slowly, those other channels started getting banned. 
And this gotcha. is something that all of these new IFBB preachers are worried about because they know just like I do that they preach to an audience that is very tiny mm. and they don't care because they know their true power comes from recording their sermons with a nice microphone and right. nice video camera and posting it online so that they can radicalize people across the country. Right. These videos sometimes get thousands and thousands of views per sermon. Huh. So they know that getting kicked off of YouTube is scarier to them than just about anything else. Yeah. That's why these new channels pop up. It's yeah. why when people see these clips, the fear on their end, the reason he thinks he's being persecuted is because people are going to find the sermon where it came from, mm -hmm. report it to YouTube at that proper timestamp, saying these indefensible things, mm -hmm. and then they will lose that new venue. Can they start a new channel somehow secretly? Yeah. Sure, they could try, but it's really hard. It's a lot of work yeah. to try to tell your followers, go here, go here. They actually started their own website where they could post these things for people to see, but that's <sighs> not the same as being on YouTube no, for the masses. of course it's not. And, right. and, and listen, if there's nothing we've learned in the last few years, deep platform people really work. Yes, that is their biggest fear. Here's the last clip uh, that I wanted to share. We're going to get the rewards from the persecution that we get from it. And you know what? He's just going to get deeper and deeper into hell. Deeper and deeper. So it's a win-win, really. <laughs> that's all I wanted to share about that, dude. That's nice. Again, that's a 20-minute sermon about me condensed down I to can't those two minutes. I truly cannot believe you just didn't play it and let us comment over it. You should have seen my face for 20 minutes. Were you beaming? Were I, you so much. so happy? Did I, you bring your children around and show them? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, children, your dad has finally accomplished I everything know. he's wanted to. Um, it just strikes <laughs> me as funny. By the way, I have other clips of him I just haven't posted yet, but there's he's just an awful yeah. person. And again, why do I share these things? Because I do think it's important that people recognize that you can be Christian mm -hmm. and say you take the Bible seriously and literally as these people do, and then come to radically mm -hmm. awful conclusions. And I need more believing Christians to understand that and fight against it. Yeah. But also sharing these clips may be the fastest way to get these people banned from mm -hmm. their biggest amplification source. Mm -hmm. Um, and he actually mentioned that elsewhere in that clip where he said, uh, I'm paraphrasing here, but he talked about how, why do they like YouTube? Why are they on that secular platform? Uh -huh. It's because we can reach all these other people mm -hmm. so they don't want to lose it. I mean, it's looking at Netflix versus Pure Flix, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, you can probably get Pure Flix if you wanted to, but it's not just right there and something everybody else has, so it's part of, like, the zeitgeist. It's, yeah, it, it deplatforming from big public places like YouTube and Twitter generally t <laughs> tends to work, especially when it's people just spewing hate that is genuinely causing harm, especially to like LGBTQ plus youth who have to hear this shit. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this Ooh. is uh, this is what investigative journalism is all about: is shedding light on I, things that might be happening. I appreciate the that spin on what's actually me sitting and listening to a bunch of crazy ass sermons while drinking but, diet. Pepsi. But, but I mean, I don't know, like not to like discount like actual real journalists which we are not <laughs> but like yeah this is what this is the point of in investigative journalism is make sure that there is somebody who figures I, out if we if nixon was taping the white house yeah. and what the like that's what it's all about i will say the thing that genuinely frightens me is i don't think guys like thompson would actually pull a the trigger themselves on anybody no. i do fear that a bunch of their followers are the sorts of people who mm -hmm. would do horrible things mm -hmm. just because it hasn't happened yet doesn't mean it won't in the future and that's right. a point all these guys stress repeatedly come on no one in our churches has done anything like yet you haven't done it yet. What do you think you're doing when but you're also, telling these people? do they people, know that? Like, are they sure nobody in their church has I ever done anything? You think one of their, I like, 23-year-old churchgoer dudes didn't go into a bar one night and have one too many Bud Light Limes and yeah. clock a guy because he thought he was gay? You I don't, don't know. think You think there's been no bad consequences? Like, I and just think And when that happens, they will naive. easily just say, well, he wasn't listening to our sermons because we said the government should do it. Like, but... 
when the Pulse nightclub massacre happened years ago, these are the same pastors who celebrated it. One of them said the tragedy is that more of them didn't die. So what I think the difference between these people and us is that we value all life and they only value lives that fit nicely into what they think makes a capital G good person. Yeah. Um, and generally, those things aren't being kind or giving to the needy. It is being a racist homophobe. Yeah. Um, they're, they've also called for the execution of women who have abortions, mm. doctors who perform them. I mean, it, it, you, whatever you think they want to see yeah. uh, gone, they've said it. Um, and I don't think people realize how many of them there are no. or that they're spreading or that the way they amplify this stuff is using like YouTube rabbit holes and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to move to a different story. Let me know if you like or don't like the clips. I would like to know because Oh, yeah, I, don't I would know. like to hear more. It's kind of fun um, for me. Let me jump to uh, a primary that happened in Maryland yesterday, Tuesday night. They had a statewide primaries for all their races. Mm-hmm. And the thing that's concerning, one, there's a Republican running for governor. The guy that won the primary is uh, a election-denying MAGA cultist Dan Cox. But the thing that caught my attention was the race for attorney general in the state, which, again, Maryland is a place that's relatively blue, except they do have a Republican governor right now who Mm. happens to be an anti-Trump type of Republican. That's why he got elected. He's seen as a moderate. Sure. But he's, I think, term limited out. So the next election is going to be between a Democrat who hopefully will win and a couple of Republicans. The governor, sitting governor right now, endorsed one of the Republicans, who's relatively moderate. Mm-hmm. The other guy, uh, I'm saying for the attorney general race, the other guy won the primary. Who is Uh-oh. the other guy that is like the Trumpist candidate? It's a guy named Michael Perautka. And here's what you need to know about Perautka, because it's not just that he's some right wing extremist. Uh, let me just read you a couple of things about it. He won with about 58% of the votes Yo. over the other guy. So it wasn't exactly a close yeah. primary election. Um, let's start with his creationism. Perautka, in 2014, Ken Ham and Answers in Genesis, they announced that they had a brand new dinosaur exhibit. And it was a big deal because they actually had like the fossil of fossils of a dinosaur. Like real fossils, not real fossils. Wow. And they said, see, it's thousands of years old. We say so. And it's like, buddy, that's not how anything works. They said we have a skeleton of an allosaur. Mm -hmm. They said it's one of the best preserved dinosaur skulls ever discovered of this particular species. And it was donated. This is like a million dollar type of exhibit. Mm -hmm. It was donated to the Creation Museum by Perautka. Um, okay. This is a Perautka is also a guy. Why who did said he have a full dinosaur He has a lot skeleton? of money. He has a lot of money to sponsor hunts like these. And then he's like, what can I do with this thing? Can I give it to a secular museum? No. Oh. Let me give it to the creationists. He sounds cool. He also said the promotion of evolution is an act of disloyalty to America. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And all, everything I just said is the least concerning stuff about him because it gets worse. He has an affiliation with the League of the South, which is a secessionist <laughs> group whose founder is racist. And then when they confronted a him about it. secessionist Southern yeah. group is racist? I know, Why? I never. When people brought that up, because he was running for a city council seat, mm-hmm. a county council seat, I should say. He's like, I'm not racist. There's nothing racist about this. The real racism is, is abortion. <laughs> <laughs> What? In 2014. <laughs> yeah. What? Again, guys full of sound bites. Um, when the Ma- Maryland General Assembly uh, in 2014 uh-huh. su- openly supported marriage equality in their state. Wait, we're done with the, the real racism <laughs> is abortion? Yeah. We're just going over we're just, that. that. That's one of many things. Great. Uh, in 2014, when they announced their support for marriage equality, uh-huh. he said the entire legislature is illegitimate because oh. they are passing bills and promoting ideas that, quote, violate God's law. Mm, you hate to say yeah. that. Um, I'm going to quote from an article from Right Wing Watch here, which tracks this guy. Perautka founded the Institute on the Constitution, a Christian reconstructionist organization that favors religious tests for public office <laughs> and teaches that the government's role is to enforce God's law and that the government has no legitimate authority to house, feed, 
clothe, educate, or give health care to anybody. Okay. 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 So this gentleman is running for attorney general of what state? Of Maryland, Maryland. like a real state, not a state that exists in his mind. Yeah. Who's Um, one of his... I thought you were going to say a real one, unlike Wyoming or something. (laughs) (laughs) Just randomly dunk on his state that deserves it. (laughs) Um, Okay, wait, wait. So he is running for attorney general, which means he's a lawyer. Uh Uh-huh, I believe so. Which means he's probably read the Constitution, probably at least got through that first one, right? You'd think the first, you know, the Bill of Rights... Like, even if you got bored halfway Look through. Look at you thinking these right-wing the first people one is care like, about the Constitution. But why is he running for... Wants power, saw an opening, took it. Doesn't matter what the position is. If I told you Trash Collector was one of the more powerful statewide offices, he would have run for that, too. Listen, I think tra- Trash Collectors are much more important than the Attorney oh, General I'm, of any given state, that, because guess what? That, my I've, friend, is my point. It's I'm not denouncing the position. I'm saying he's looking for statewide office. There's a Trumpist running for yeah. governor. He's going to avoid that race. Another thing about this guy, who's one of his BFFs? Roy Moore. The conservative Christian oh, and alleged get pedo for something or not? He unbusted. sued. He sued Sasha Baron Cohen for making them look <laughs> bad in a reality show because the character uh, Borat's dude was playing was like, "I have a magic wand here, and it's like a pedo detector." Oh, and of course, no. the joke was when he put the wand next to Roy Moore, it started going off. That's the joke. And, of course, uh, Moore's called it defamation. He sure. sued. The response was, dude, it was satire. It's a joke. Also, we didn't say you did anything. Um, oh, and the judge said, dance. yeah, this is not defamation. I thought that the conservatives <laughs> were supposed to be the ones who had the firm upper lip and never, like, had their feelings hurt. Yeah, no. Facts are, what, facts are greater than feelings? Unless yeah, facts, it's, facts don't care about your feelings. Facts don't care about your feelings, unless it's their feelings that get hurt. It's true. They do have sensitive non-snowflake feelings. Oh, and by the way, Peroutka attended a QAnon conference earlier this year. So here's Shocked. here's the other thing. Yep. Um, could he win? That is the question people are asking. Because uh, when it comes to the governor, the MAGA governor dude, Democrats actually pushed for that victory. They pushed for the more extreme candidate to win the race, just like they did in Illinois with Mm. the governor's race. They pushed for the more extreme right wing candidate to win the race. How did they do it? By running ads that say, hey, Republicans, when you're thinking about who should win your primary, this guy over here. He's he's something. He has like a hundred percent record from the NRA. Oh, he's boy. very anti-abortion, you guys. Mm. And then at the bottom, you see paid for by Democrats. So why do they want that? Because they think if you elect or if you primary win, like the more extreme candidate, it's going to hurt That's that shot side us in the foot before, hasn't it? In the general election, and that is where I'm going with this. Like, dude, I'm a f- I don't know if this strategy works because we've elected. We elected one of these trolls for president. For president. And if this plan fails in any of these cases, attorney general mm-hmm. in Maryland, governor in a blue state, like, oh my goodness, that's disaster all over the place. Oh, so boy. I, I would genu- genuinely hope people are paying attention because this is an attorney general for a state that most people don't pay a ton of attention to outside Mm of it Mm -hmm. um could easily skate under the radar that's the scary thing i hope i hope the campaign against him is dude this guy's crazy and people recognize that we'll see if they do and if they don't we're all gonna suffer yep yay (laughs) Um, good for us let me talk about this uh story that i found Super fascinating because I heard about it about five years ago. No, several, a few years ago. Okay. Um, and I didn't quite know what to do with it. I heard from a woman who said, you should know about this guy. I won't give more details than that. And okay. I said, that sounds interesting. I hope you can get that story out. I don't quite have the resources to do justice to this guy's story. Okay. And I heard back from this woman who said, he did talk to a reporter. This story is finally out. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't wait to read this. So here's the backstory you need to know. In uh, Yakima, sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong, Washington, state of Washington, there was a, a guy in 2003 by the name of Father Jarrell Mitchell, Catholic priest uh, in a church there. He worked at a place called Holy Family Catholic Church. Um, part of the Catholic Church hierarchy, nothing weird about that. 
in September of 2003, we found out that this guy had pictures that he should not have been that he not should not have had uh-huh. illicit pictures underage boys. Uh-oh. It was scary. Um, this stuff was reported to higher ups, uh-huh. and the thing higher is, higher ups in the church, in the, or in church, the law, in the church. And here's the thing: they were reported to secular law enforcement as well. But the Yakima County prosecuting attorney Ron Zirkel apparently decided, like a year later, he's like, "I can't file charges on this because the pictures themselves are not sexually explicit." And because of that, I don't think I can prosecute this guy on anything. Okay. Um, all I've right. I've not heard that take before. I, I won't And what com- are the nature of the pictures? They were just not wearing clothing, and it was disturbing. So, uh, but what about the Catholic Church? What wait, are they going to do? Yeah. Stop. Mm-hmm. So these, this dude was like, yeah, this grown ass man has pictures of naked underage boys, but they're not doing anything explicitly sexual. So we're good. Or at least we can't get him the way y'all want us to get him. So just having naked pictures of an underage person is not. I guess not. I listen, don't ask me the specifics there, but that's what this guy decided. But there's a different question of what's the Catholic church going to do about it. And the answer was they shuffled him around one to another church about five minutes away that Mm -hmm. is attached to a school. They're not even trying anymore. Not even trying. Later on, this priest uh, found a new job in a different state. Um, it's just disturbing. And the churches, they had an advisory board that looks over these issues. And people ask, like, why'd you move him to the church next door with the school attached to it? And they said, we didn't have any victim. And there wasn't even a hint of other allegations. That was their defense of this guy. But Um, that's nothing (laughs) because there are victims that small children who are naked being photographed. That's way ahead of you. Yep. So this guy then... Am I losing my mind? No, Am I the one going slowly insane? Or is it the rest of the world? It's the rest of the world. In 2006, that's when this guy eventually moved to St. Louis and started working at a church there. Mm. But ne- the following year, 2007, he resigns. Why does he resign? Because a bunch of victims advocates realize why he was being shuffled around yep. and started raising a fuss. Good. Um, I'm going to read from one of these articles. The priest was, quote, hounded by SNAP, Survivor ne- Survivor's Network of Those Abused by Priests. I'm sorry, he was Vo- hounded? hounded? Voice of the faithful and people in the community here. If they had stopped harassing him, said one of the Catholic higher-ups, if they had stopped harassing him, he'd be fine. But I guess the harassment got to the priest and he resigned that year. So this is the same thing as everything else. Somebody does something terrible, sees any sort of consequence of it, and is like, I I am being harangued out Mm. of my home and my career. Why are you canceling me? Yes. Um, So here's, (sighs) so the woman who sent me the message, where did she come into this story? Well, it turns out that uh, she's, a close contact, I will say, mm. of a guy who was a staffer at that church. And let me tell you why that staffer is kind of at the center of this entire story. It turns out in 2003, he was a pastoral assistant at that church. He's mm-hmm. married, has a family. It's all well and good. He's mm-hmm. not a priest, mm-hmm. but he started working at the church. They liked him. They decided to keep him as a staff member to help out with things. And his name is Frank Murray. And in 2003... Um, He was supposed to be out of town one day. His car broke down. So it turns out he's still in Washington. Um, And that's when the priest in question... he's how old at this time? uh, He's uh, middle-aged, let's say. Oh, he's an adult. Yeah, he's an adult. Uh, Darrell Mitchell, this priest, says, Oh, well, since you're in town, can you help me? My computer has a problem. So Frank Murray goes over to the guy's office, Mm -hmm. and he realizes, oh, your printer, you want to print something, but the cord is connected into the wrong thing. It's one of those, like, oh, old people don't know how to use computers. He's like, oh, that's an easy fix. I can just plug it into the right thing. It's the thing that is about to happen, what I think is going to happen. And so he plugs it into the right thing, and he says, well, let me go ahead and just print whatever was in the queue. He starts pushing print, and all of a sudden, out come these color pictures of little boys. He, he said, Frank Murray called his wife, and he said, first thing I did was call my wife, Linda, and said, 
I think I might be in trouble at work because there's no way he's keeping this shit to himself. He reported it to like the advisory board chair at the church. He reported Uh it to the bishop. Um, And later on, when the priest was like, uh, here's what happened. One of the church leaders addressed the congregation. He met with the staff at Holy Family Mm -hmm. like a few weeks later. Yeah. And he said Father Mitchell had suffered a psychiatric breakdown oh, due to the stress of leading such a large parish. Murray, who's in the room, is like, that's not what happened. Um, I sat there. This is Murray talking. I sat there knowing he was lying, knowing that breakdown had nothing to do with being uh, had to do with being caught with the pictures. Sure. It had nothing to do with uh, so much stress at work. Yeah. He didn't say anything publicly at that point. Um, Then the uh, Catholic leader in charge said he wanted to talk with me privately. We went into another office. He asked me to keep all of this stuff to myself and said the diocese was trying to get Father Durrell some help. Mm. That's when he told me, if this gets out, no bishop in the country would hire Father Durrell as a priest. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yes, correct. That's the idea, my dude. Mm -hmm. Um, If a man is exploring sexual attraction to underage boys in his private time, maybe he is not the person to teach little boys in his professional time. Would just be my my idea. Eventually, I mean, again, this the church, the church leaders did contact local authorities, one of whom said, I can't prosecute this guy. Mm-hmm. And they considered it a done deal at that point. That's why they started shuffling him around everywhere. But Murray never re- really said much about it. He, at some point, the media contacted the church. It's like, what's up with this dude? Yeah. And they yelled at Murray, like, did you talk to them? And he's like, one, I did not talk to them. But two, like, what the hell? Why are you mad at me about all this? It truly, it, and this is how you know you've caught somebody, like, doing something bad as if you say, how come you did this? I'm like, who told you? How do you know? Who told you? If they're more mad about how you found out about the bad thing, than they are apologetic for doing the bad thing. Then you've caught somebody. He found the pictures in September of 2003. He was still on staff for the next three. Okay. three. He was still on staff for the next couple of years. But <sighs> what began happening is that parishioners at that church, they began to suspect that he, Frank Murray, the good guy, that maybe he planted the pictures on this guy's printer, which not only is that a conspiracy theory, yeah. Frank Murray told reporters now, like, look at the timestamp on the pictures. It was from the day before I went to go fix the computer. That like, is extraordinarily provable. Yeah. This is not, this is, you can't just point fingers and say, oh yeah, maybe. Like, these are things that are provable. This, oh, yeah, 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 then okay. they said in 2006, uh, we need to fire you. It's not because of anything that happened. It's because of budgets and downsizing. And he's like, yeah, I'm sure that's what it is. Um, For the bonus episode, I just want to let you know, I'm going to be telling the story about how the BTK killer got caught. And guess what? It's really similar to this. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> um, I will leave you with some good news here. Oh, great. In 2006, this guy, Frank Murray, the good guy, Mm -hmm. lost his job then at the church that he loved, other than this horrible incident. But this is uh, from the new articles about him. Murray was hired by the Yakima County Juvenile Court System and became an advocate (gasps) for abused and neglected children in the foster care system. Yeah. Um, After working for a year and a half as a court-appointed advocate for 90 to 100 children, he became the supervisor of the program and stayed there for the next eight or nine years. Wow. Um, He helped the county fulfill and retain a grant to help children um, who were victims of sexual abuse. Um, He believes his background as a youth minister helped, both with the experience of working with children and having empathy for their situation. (laughs) He didn't ask for that job. Yeah. He wasn't pushing for it. He didn't think he would be in that job, but he felt like, you know, my calling is to help people. My Mm -hmm. religious calling is to help people. And I caught this dude doing this. This was his next step. And he's kind of only retired now. One of the interesting things that came up in the reporting that is just out this week is that it turns out one of the higher ups at the church that was overseeing all this and shuffling this bad priest around Mm -hmm. Is that the bishop, the guy in charge, received apparently a reprimand from the Vatican in 2019 for handling this so poorly. Wow. 
and that was not put out to the public ever. It came out during the reporting and all this. It also isn't much. It's like a slap on the wrist, Mm -hmm. but it's a reminder that like the diocese uh, did not share that with the public either, which, you know, seems like a thing you would want to tell people. Um, yeah, I think so too, but I also don't, it, I would rather this, that they are doing something and not being vocal about it than the opposite, which is, oh my God, we're working so hard about this and doing yeah. nothing behind the scenes. Does that make, like, it's not great, but it's better than the other thing. Carly, it's okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to jump to this, uh, something a little lighter, which is my favorite Twitter account ever, The Transformed Just Wife. Blimkey. Oh. Yes, The Transformed <laughs> Wife. Um, she said, I cannot even imagine being a teacher in the public school these days. Yeah, they have to do education what do you and think reading she's mad and about? math. And avoid gunshots and yeah. get not paid or respected. She said, I can't imagine being a teacher these days. In I'm the public sure schools these days. sure it has to do with a teacher being punished for mm-hmm. using a kid's preferred she pronoun. She goes on to say, bingo, watching children change gender uh-huh. pronouns and having to remember them all while being heartbroken about it and the stuff they're required to teach. I predict a huge shortage of teachers on the horizon. Does she think that when a kid comes out as trans, it's like they destroy the old body and recreate a new like body in the correct gender? Correct. It's a one day process. You flip the switch and then it's done. And then the kids go up to the teacher and say, this is who I am now. Listen, I, mean, I know a bunch of teachers, a bunch of them have left the profession, mm-hmm. literally zero of them mm-hmm. have said that is the reason why they are leaving. I would imagine more commonly a reason to leave teaching is lunatics like this woman constantly calling and screaming about pronouns or whatever. That sounds like the hardest part of being a teacher, my dude. Yeah. I did hear on Ugh. Twitter from a bunch of teachers who are like, okay, if I can call Catherine Katie... Calling someone by the right pronoun is not an issue. Not it a applies problem. to a couple of kids. Mm-hmm. They tell it to me. I remember it. We move on. That's how it works. Mm-hmm. It's called respect. Yeah. It's called being a decent human being, mm-hmm. a good person. And that is why she thinks everyone's leaving. I feel like the harder part of being a teacher would be like, oh, this sweet, you know, 10 year old came into my classroom. Ew, now they're a, mon- a monster and they're 14 and they're talking back. That's how kids change in that time. That's the hard change they go to. They go from being cute and adorable to little shitty teenagers. That's probably <laughs> harder than your kid changing genders. She also put out another tweet. This is a godly womanhood, Lori Alexander, who I swear to you is a real human being and godly not a troll. Godly womanhood, glory, glory. Lori Alexander? Uh, Lori. Lori Alexander. Yeah, but she also wrote, years ago, it made sense for young single women to become school teachers. College was affordable, not godless, and students were fairly well behaved. Now, college is unaffordable, godless, students are unmanageable, and Mm -hmm. teachers must remember the right pronouns, sad emoji. That's hard. Yeah, yeah. I... Uh, People who hate public education seem to have no clue what happens in a classroom. No. What public education is like. They reject all the plans to make college more affordable Mm -hmm. or free. They do not know what students are dealing with. They have this weird idea that schools are godless when they are, I promise you, they are not godless in any meaningful way. No, no. And they are fed up with the idea of calling people by a correct pronoun. (laughs) Yeah, I... I do not know how that's a thing anyone cares about or has a problem with. Well, it's because nothing real is going wrong for Christians right now, and they need something to complain about. They've had, you know, 45 out of 45 Christian presidents. They've had 45 to 45 male presidents. They've had 44 white male presidents. (laughs) They have been in control since the beginning, and they are being forced to, like, seed the tiniest bit of it, and they're losing their ever-loving mind. I want to play one more clip for you here because this went viral last week, and it was frightening. It was posted by uh, a writer, Nick Knudsen, who... um, Let me give you some background here. On July 1st, a whole bunch of conservative Christians, including uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, the conspiracist congresswoman, the anti-abortion zealot Abby Johnson, Mm -hmm. and a bunch of uh, televangelists, evangelists, people like that, they gathered to, uh, well, 
they gathered because that's what they do. Um, it was <laughs> called Flashpoint Live. It's uh-huh. one of those Kenneth Copeland ministry shows, sure. and they were doing a live version of it. It's hosted by Gene Bailey, who is connected to Kenneth Copeland. And at one point, Gene Bailey gets his panel of dudes on stage, oh God. and he urges the audience to like f- put a QR code scan a code, go to the right website so they can read along with what he's putting on the screen. And it was called the Watchman Decree. I want to play this whole clip for you because holy crap, it's scary. Is it long? Um, It's about four minutes long. So if you're looking to forward through it, I would forward about four minutes. But I want to play it for you and I listen to the whole thing. We will talk about it afterwards right here. All right, go ahead. All right, Dutch, lead us. So we'll read it together, okay? As a patriot of faith, I attest my allegiance first and foremost to the kingdom of God and the Great Commission. Secondly, I agree to be a watchman over our nation concerning its people and their rights for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Whereas we, the church, are God's governing body on the earth, Whereas we have been given legal power from heaven and now exercise our authority, whereas we are God's ambassadors and spokespeople over the earth, whereas through the power of God we are the world influencers, whereas because of our covenant with God we are equipped and delegated by Him to destroy every attempted advance of the enemy. We make our declarations. We decree that America's executive branch of government will honor God and defend the Constitution. We decree that our legislative branch, Congress, will write only laws that are righteous and constitutional. We decree that our judicial system will issue rulings that are biblical and constitutional. We declare that we stand against wokeness, the occult, and every evil attempt against our nation. Wokeness and the occult? We declare that we now take back our God-given freedoms according to our Constitution. We declare that we take back influence at the local level in our communities. We decree that we take back and permanently control positions of influence and leadership in each of the seven mountains. We decree that the blood of Jesus covers and protects our nation. It protects and separates us from God. Dude, we declare you can't that our have nation these is say this many words. We declare that America is strong spiritually, financially, militarily, and technologically. We decree that evil carries no power, authority, or rights in our land or over our people. We decree that we will operate in unity, going beyond denominational lines in order to accomplish the purposes of God for our nation. And we decree that America oh my God. be saved! They're still, they're still going for a second. This is not... We know this... We like five Here we go. We know this we know. country was founded Jesus. on Judeo-Christian principles. We know the truth. Therefore, we stand for truth and will never be deceived. We will never stop fighting. We will never, ever, ever give up or give in. We will take our country back. We will honor the one true God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. America shall be saved. Okay, I just want you to think about what would have happened if we were talking about Muslims or atheists or Satanists. I really did not care for the fact that I had to listen to like 300 people recite a thousand words. Buddy, 
300, no. No? We are talking tens of thousands of people oh. in that crowd, I, I think. I okay, think even worse. It was it's several thousand too many minimum. people. And the reason this tweet went viral is what Nick Knudsen posted is, if this doesn't scare you, I don't know what will. Yeah. Christo-fascist indoctrination ceremony. Totally. Which I'm amused by. But I just, let me be clear about what you just heard. That was a group of conservative Christian, um, Christian leaders who have ties to politics and had politician, I mean, they had a congresswoman on stage. Mm. These are people saying, we think... America's executive branch, the presidency, should honor God. Congress must write laws that are righteous Mm -hmm. and connected with the Bible. And they said a lot of times biblical and constitutional. Biblical was always first. The Supreme Court, the judicial system, will issue rulings that are biblical and constitutional. And the thing you brought up while we were listening to it, they said one thing. We decree that we take back and permanently control positions of influence and leadership in each of the seven mountains. Okay. This is something, if you care about Christian nationalism, you should be aware of this phrasing. The seven mountains mandate I'm- is a Christian nationalist uh, idea that says we need to take over the seven areas of religion, family, education, entertainment, media, government, and business. Basically, yeah. every aspect of American life. Mm-hmm. And if we can control those things, we can win over the culture. Right. There's a book so. from 2008 that's called The Seven Mountain Prophecy, Unveiling the Coming Elijah Revolution. Yeah, yeah. Um, but basically, they're saying our government needs to be a theocracy without using that word. And that is what is frightening about this. It's not just conservative talking points Right. These are people who want to take over the government and impose a specific brand of conservative mm-hmm. Christian ideas onto everybody. And in some ways, like with the Supreme Court, they are doing that. Well, and we've seen them do that for decades at the local level, for sure. Like school boards, things like that. You'll find a lot of them have been sort of low-key taken over in this way of our goal isn't to make sure my kid gets a great education. My goal is to make sure this school is not pushing any liberal nonsense. And this isn't just a wish list of like, this isn't some rhetorical That's idea that they want. It's it's a goal and they're literally doing it. I mean, declaring that the judicial system must issue rulings that are biblical undercuts the whole First Amendment principle of Completely. church-state separation. Saying that evil carries no power, authority, or rights is very weird because they can just declare anything evil. They already do. Abortion is evil, so therefore any restriction on it is justified. Right. Oh, someone got sexually assaulted and she's 10? Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Abortion is more evil than anything else. Right. Um, They say they will operate in unity. They said, you know, we have no denominations or anything like that, but that's only unifying to conservative Christians. If you're a progressive Christian or non-Christian, you are cut out of this entirely. I think the the thing that we should always be kind of focused on is is how very uh, organized um, the Christian right is in in this kind of sense. They are unified and they are following the guy in front of them. And yeah, probably that dude is a monster, but they're following him. They're all in lockstep. Yeah. I was listening. To, we talked about a little bit um, uh, the last archive, the podcast mm. I've been listening to. And there's an amazing episode called Hush Rush that talked about how Newt Gingrich was really part of the architect of this idea of we need to take over this, that, and the other thing. So it, in the 90s, he would send out these like audio tapes and people would just listen to them and it would just be talking points on like, here's where politics should be if I had my way. And so they started undermining the media, like in, right. a, in, a, in an active He took thing. over C-SPAN right. <laughs> because right. no one was watching at the time. And this was not a, oh, this happened under his watch. This was an active plan. I should of, say, he used C-SPAN because right. he knew people were watching, right. but not many people knew about it. Right. But so, yeah, they, they said, we want to do this. Then they made it a reality yeah. while people weren't paying much attention. Right. So when we hear shit like this and it's like, oh, it's only, like you said, 10 people or, you know, 20 people in the, in the crowd, yeah, 
but this is what's going on everywhere, and this is literally their exact. Like, yeah, I, you I cannot hate that write I sound these. Like, you cannot write these people off as fringe. Right. These are mainstream evangelicals, or whatever label you want to use, and they are already in positions of power. This isn't like we wish we had some power. Right. No, they You're already <laughs> are. They are working to acquire even more of it. And again, I just want to point out. Like, this Watchmen decree that they were saying here, can you imagine what these people would say if any other group of people mm -hmm. said, well, my religion tells me this is how our country ought to be run? Right. They would be the first ones saying it's Sharia law, no yeah. matter the religion. No matter the religion. They, they would be saying, well, no, <laughs> we can't have Sharia. a theocracy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, again, I want to point out, Gene Bailey, the first voice you heard in that clip, the one saying, well, you, why don't you read this for everybody? Uh -huh. He runs uh, Eagle Mountain International Church, which is affiliated with Kenneth Copeland Ministries. I believe they are in-laws of sorts. Oh. Uh, Kenneth Copeland, of course, the, arguably the wealthiest right. evangelist, televangelist in the world. If you are voting for Republicans at any level of government, this is ultimately what you are putting in power. Yeah. It doesn't have to be the person itself, but you are giving power to a party that supports people like this and actively courts them for their votes. Yeah. Because you won't hear any Republicans, seriously, as a group, denouncing this. Maybe an individual or two, uh -huh. not as a whole. So, I mean, I think they meant for this clip to be inspirational, and the whole thing is a nightmare. Yeah, it really is. It's um, grim. Last story for you, and I'm going to end this one on a slightly happier note. Uh, this took place also in Canada, which is where Happy News comes from <laughs> um in edmonton uh it turns out a church is being fined eighty thousand dollars for violating uh covid protocols and basically jeopardizing public health uh here's the story here uh last year covid's still going everywhere people are they have limitations on gatherings how many people can be in a room together and a woman named uh, tracy fortin who's the pastor of church in the vine in edmonton Basically, the rule was in that province, you have to let the inspector come in to your building, whatever it is, mm -hmm. and just make sure you are following protocols. Mm -hmm. Are you guys standing far apart? Are people wearing masks? Mm -hmm. Are you doing the things you got to do even when you have church services or any sort of gathering? Mm -hmm. Religions are not exempt from these inspectors because guess what? The virus doesn't care if right. you're a church. So when the inspector came to their church... Tracy Fortin and her church members are like, you cannot come in here. She did that multiple times, and that's illegal because Alberta's Public Health Act says no person shall obstruct, molest, hinder, or interfere with someone whose job is keeping the public safe. Good. No religious exemption to that rule. So after they were, this past May, the church leaders were found guilty of violating that law six separate times. Wow. They celebrated as they left the courtroom because now they're like martyrs for the of faith. Of course, they love that. Uh-huh. They actually said, uh, there's a video of them doing this. When we first stepped out of the courtroom, I think we might have surprised them or caught them a little off guard, the media. Mm -hmm. We said, yay, we're guilty. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, anyway, never crossed our mind that a deadly virus like is being spread is and hurting people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and so the question was, okay, they are found guilty, but what's the punishment going to be? And now we have an answer. $80,000. Hmm. Uh, that's what the judge said. I should say they wanted to pay zero dollars. The prosecution asked for a $120,000 fine. The fine 80,000 is actually 65,000 against the church, 15,000 against the pastor, wow. uh, pastors themselves. And the judge actually said this in a written order. I have concluded the gravity of this offense is high. Albertans were wow. dying from COVID and our hospitals were challenged to accommodate and treat the sick. Major surgeries were postponed and treatments for other illness were postponed. Long-term effects of the disease and the delay in other surgeries are still being identified. Mm. Blah, blah, blah. It was a deliberate refusal to allow the inspector to do her duty. Good. It was an intentional and deliberate choice on their part, which makes their degree of responsibility high. Hmm. And because this church doesn't have a lot of money on its own, but it does take donations, that's why the judge didn't give the maximal penalty. I see. Uh, but I did see an online fundraising effort to raise mm. money for this church to pay its bills. As of now, I think it's about 4000 
far cry from the 80s. A little low. Because it turns out they don't have a ton of support for endangering the lives of everyone else. Yeah, a lot of those people really (laughs) took a strong gamble, and it did not pay off in many cases. They have until August 31st to pay the bills, otherwise the steeper penalty. Uh, They say they're going to appeal the decision. Of course. But again, it's not like they have much legs, a leg to stand on here, because they literally defied a rule that they were not allowed to defy. Right. And I hope the court doesn't let them off the hook just because they happen to be doing it in the name of their faith. Right. Uh, Canada, come on, prove that you're better than we yeah, are. You have to be <laughs> your only hope. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop there for now. Cool. Um, where do we find you? Uh, you can always find me on Twitter at Jess Blumke. You can find Hemet at Hemet Meta on Twitter. Go to OnlySky.media. Please go to to support this show. Go to Patreon.com/slash Friendly Atheist Podcast. Mm-hmm. We also have a Discord server. We also have a private Facebook group for anyone who wants to discuss these things. Mm-hmm. Uh, two quick things. I wanted to thank everyone for their really kind feedback on my appearance on God Awful Movies, which came out this past week, I think. I don't know what time it is anymore. Um, I got a lot of fun comments, and I appreciated it. It was a lot of fun. Um, another thing is, I, um, as I, I've talked about a little bit, I just started working part-time at the uh, Therapeutic Course back Riding Barn that I have volunteered at since I was a kid. Um, and so now I'm doing like a lot of fundraising shit for them. So if anybody has like fundraising opportunities i would love to talk to you about it do you have a horse you want to get rid of do you have a truck you want to get rid of we need many many things and some money we're at the hansen center under the ray graham association i'm gonna be hitting you guys up a lot for this kind of thing we need three new horses anyway my subjects for the post show are are you ready yes um the show Heartstopper, which i'm halfway through and in love with uh the movie cabaret which i just saw in theaters again for the first time in many years um, the movie in Bruges, um, the show Abbott Elementary, and oh, of course, my BTK story that I'm going to lead off with. All right. We'll see you in the bonus episode. Goodbye. Bye.